if you're doing it yourself and you're not doing it right, if you're not an expert at this and you're leaving it on the table, why would you not go to a company like Atita and, and do this? Yeah, you're going to pay them, but it's found money. Hey everyone. Yes, we are finally live. We had some tech issues. So I'm Norm Farrar, AKA the beard guy here. And welcome to another lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. Today, we're going to be discussing about building your brand while uh, dealing with adversity. We'll talk about how brands can emerge stronger. What are some of the biggest lessons our guests learn being a part of the fast, uh, one of the fastest unicorns in history and tips for new sellers going into 2024. All right, well, guys, thanks for holding on. I know we're about 20 minutes late, but we'll make this happen. What the hell, Kelsey? Holy jeez. Not only am I late, he he messes my, you know, he interrupts my spiel. We got to get on with the show, you know. I got to keep you on a tight rope today. I'll keep you on a tight rope. Just <laughs> Okay. So today we're discussing building your brand and while dealing with adversity, our guest is the VP of Europe for uh, for Europe's uh, branch of Katita. His early career was a cons was in consulting, help helping Fortune 500 companies execute big strate strategic changes. In 2013, he bootstrapped an Amazon FBA brand and built it uh, up until two tw two th 2020. Oh my God, am I going to get through this? Oh my God. Okay. He was wiped out by COVID in 2020. He joined Thoracio as their first employee in Europe and led the MNA team from London. Now he's head of Europe uh, for Gatita. And oh my gosh, Jim, I'm 20 minutes late introducing you. Kelsey screws up with the music, but our first time guest, Jim Mann, and I am excited to speak to him just shortly. Let's have a word from our sponsor. Facing cash flow challenges with your e-commerce business? Discover Viably, your ultimate financial ally. From real-time sales data integrations to immediate funding access, Viably is here to support you. Plan your growth with their free tool for online sellers and engage with specialists whenever you need. Extend your cash flow with Viably. Sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee, and enjoy the show. Welcome, Jim. I'm sorry for butchering your intro. That's all right, Norm. I, I feel like you need to take a deep breath. Nice to see you. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, what I happened? think I should. I, you know... If this was the beginning, if this is the first year of doing this podcast, I would be in the fetal position. But uh, I, I'm, you know, I did pick myself up. I was only on the ground for about 30 seconds. But uh, <laughs> it's nice to have you on. Yeah, it's nice to be here. I, I got some time with Kelsey. I've been finding out all about your life. I feel like interviewing you now. Uh -oh. in Hawaii, hanging out with top surfers. What's all this? Yeah, yeah. You know, just you, you got to do some things in life. <laughs> By the way. Jim, I uh, I was talking to Kelsey yesterday, and I'm going to do something really unique, and I hope it's going to be next week. I am going to have ChatGPT interview me. Oh, wow. And it's going to be the full podcast. And I, I'm very curious to see what, you know, uh, it has to say, what the questions will be. But uh, so that's a little spoiler alert for next week. We're going to try to do that. How do you do, do, that? How, how do, you do that? how do you set the prompts up to do that? Um, I'm going to be working off my phone, so I'm just going to be going, talking back and forth. So if you want, I'll let you know when we're going to be doing it and I'll show you exactly what I, um, what I'm, what I'm up to. And, uh, it's not that hard to do a buddy of mine. We're having a scar the other night and he said, uh, I, I just did this for my company and I went, what? And he just showed me how to do it. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll tell you afterwards. So I'm no, I don't want in. any spoilers until then. <laughs> I'm going to tune in. There's a debate now with Atan on LinkedIn. You might have seen it where uh, around sort of the use of ChatGPT and whether it can really deliver customer experience or not. So um, I saw that. Yeah, timely. yeah. We'll all be tuning in. See what happens. Yeah, it'll be fantastic. But now let's switch it over to you. You've gone through, man. You you 
you've got some really interesting stories yourself. So why don't we talk about some of your many business hardships and you know how you were able to deal with these difficulties and grow your brand? Yeah, I mean, where do you want to start? <laughs> Life's been pretty good, but I've had a heat. I've been hit by lightning a couple of times. So um, are we talking about Amazon? Are we talking about before Amazon? Where do you let's, want to start? Let's just go through it. So you've, yeah, probably life before Amazon, just, just leading up to it, starting your, uh, or bootstrapping your brand, uh, you know, getting uh, the problems in COVID, going over to Thrasio and, you know, uh, it's unfortunate what we've heard about Thrasio and now yeah. move to, to Gatita. Okay. Um, so before I, I started my Amazon business, I was actually living in Spain. And, and before that, I was working consulting. I had a kind of proper tie job and a suit and I was working with big companies and helping them drive uh, change, often sort of technology or post m &A actually, helping leadership teams kind of get on with each other and, and make the spreadsheet a reality post-merger. Um, but I had a bit of an early midlife and um, a bit like you, I ended up in Spain. I had a kite surf school on the beach in a beautiful place called Tarifa. Um, but I was still consulting back in London, freelancing. And uh, I was working with eBay's European leadership team at the time. And there was a strategy document that was talking about the move towards marketplaces. And my head was always full of useless information because I was looking at these decks and working with leadership teams. It was work. It wasn't really relevant to me. But I got back about a month after this job with eBay. And a friend of mine said, oh, have you heard about Amazon FBA? I'm like, yeah, I have. And uh, I've just been with eBay and these numbers, and it sounds quite cool. And he goes, oh, there's these guys doing a course. And it was it was ASM. Do you remember ASM, Amazing Science? Oh, I know them really well. Yeah, yeah. amazing.com. Uh, yeah, so I, I bought the course 2013, like 10 years ago, pretty much. Um, you know, it was watch the video, do this, do that, bought some stuff, stuck it up, and um, it sold. And and I was and I, I never forget. I said to my friends, "I just you know, it's a thousand bucks. It was nothing." I'm like, yeah, it sold. And everyone's like, "What really? Yeah, it sells." So, um, carried on doing this, and you know, so I quite quickly got to sort of doing fifty grand orders, and then went to China. Um, and by the end of two thousand fourteen, we're on a million dollars in revenue. Um, so there was no looking back. I was all in. And so, two thousand fourteen to two thousand twenty, um, yeah, I built a great business, knocking on for an eight figure business. And, nice. Um, the, the, the lightning strike was COVID, which was amazing for most people. But the one place you didn't want to be when when uh, when COVID struck was in the travel category. And unfortunately, I was all in on travel. Everything was travel accessories, packing oh. cubes, toiletry bags, shirt folders, any geeky thing that went in a suitcase for cruise ships or for airplanes was what I did. And, and the two things that were just killed with COVID were cruise ships and planes. So, um, yeah, I, that, that was... Uh, that was a hard time. Um, oh my gosh! I, I borrowed a lot of money because the business was growing fast. So as you know, like you know, in services you can sell a deal and then you put the team together. In consulting, if you want to sell a lot in 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 Amazon, you have to buy a lot of inventory to put it on the shelves. If there's nothing on the shelf, you can't sell it. So I was growing fast. I borrowed a lot of money to feed, to feed the growth, and suddenly someone turned off the lights, and I was there holding <laughs> a lot of inventory around the world in a lot of warehouses. Um, but 90, 95% drop in demand. So it went from huge sales to huge bills overnight. Um, you know, uh, Jim, when, um, when this was just six months before this happened, I was tired of flying. I was kind of grossed out about everything on a plane. You go in, you don't know how many heads, you know, were leaning back. I'm bald. So it's really gross. You know, not knowing where anybody or what, is on the side when you lean your head on the window. So um, my family is in the PPE business. Oh, wow. And we own our own factory in China. And I was talking to my dad. And I said, you know what? We need to get travel wipes out there. And he says, yeah, I, I think that's a good idea. And 2000, well, six months later, we're on the opposite end. Yeah. So you got nailed in travel. Yeah, yeah, we we like within a month we were booked for a year, so it was really crazy. But you you never know, and that's the point. You know, it, it's it's tough. But you were dealing with cash flow, and we we talked to a lot of people uh, about capitalization. You know, making sure that you're properly capitalized. So you had a home run. But didn't you feel that you were still just working for the product? You weren't making any money because you were continually growing. 
W was that the fuel? Um, that hindsight's a great thing. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I was starting to smell that exit, and I had a number in my oh. head that I was shooting for. And uh, which a lot of Amazon sellers and my friends were doing at the time. Like, you know, some guys wanted private jet money. I just wanted to have be mortgage free, have the kids university paid for. And if, if my next venture was a complete fail, I'd be OK. That's the kind of money I wanted. So some pocket money is going to do new stuff. But enough that if I failed consistently to be able to, to carry on. Um, now I'd take a fraction of that. But at the time, like I was on that trajectory for, for an exit. And, and a lot of my friends, and I'm sure people you know, when COVID hit, they accelerated and got that exit. But um, yeah, it didn't, it didn't happen for me. I, 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 had, I had the opposite effect. Oh. COVID. So what did you do? Did you just liquidate? No, you couldn't give it away. You could not give the stuff away because everyone was in the same position. So at first it's like, right, we'll, we'll drop to, to cost. Still didn't sell. Okay, $40 product. We'll try and sell it for $5 less than cost. Still didn't sell. <laughs> um, I tried to make shift packing cubes into home organization, which was blowing up. And sort of, it was almost like sort of disguise a packing cube now as, as an underbed storage tool. And then Amazon kept <laughs> recognizing the shift and grabbing it and putting it back into the categories. Oh. I, I tried everything. Um, and you couldn't like, hold on until, and nobody knew how long this- No one knew how, how long it was yeah. gonna go. And, and it went on a long time. I, yeah. I went from having kind of 120 days of inventory to having seven years of inventory overnight. It was, uh, you know, big storage fees. So I, I eventually, when I realized COVID wasn't going anywhere, um, I'd take it all out of FBA, um, put it into the cheapest long-term storage I could. And then it was like, right, I got to start generating some income because I stopped, you know, overnight I stopped paying myself because the, the, the money, the business was bleeding money overnight. So I was like, how am I going to make some money? So I, I was then doing PPE, um, like everyone was at the time, trying to do deals around that. Found Found the product, but couldn't actually find anyone um in the uk you know the, the uk government was was a closed door it was crazy um so did that for a while and then you know the, the thrasio opportunity came along so i um after about six months i joined thrasio interesting and you were the first employee in in europe yep um so steph who's still there was one of the co-founders and she was in a mastermind with me um she was an mds you, you probably know the mds mastermind million okay. dollar seller yep. mastermind yep. and so i reached out to steph and i said look you know you guys are blowing up i've been blown up <laughs> i've been to say i've been demolished and um i said look i don't know much about m a but I, my background's in consulting there's not much i don't know about amazon um how's about getting involved in the acquisitions business and she introduced me to the head of m a and to the co-founders and they're like um with what you know about amazon don't worry you're not a numbers guy we'll put some smart analysts around you and you guys go out and just look at businesses together and you, you'll have an instinct. The analysts will then run the numbers to, to, to know whether the hypothesis and the instinct is right. And so um, it actually, you know, everything, everything in life happens for a reason. Right? Obviously, it would have been great to have accelerated and sold my business. That didn't happen. But I'm very grateful. I learned a lot. I love learning. Um, I think a lot of us as entrepreneurs love learning. That's what drives us. We're curious and we're, we like to work out how to, to do new things. So what was amazing there is I suddenly found myself surrounded by people from investment banking and private equity and Ivy League degrees, which I couldn't even dream about having. And, and I was there in the thick of it with those guys learning, soaking it all up, um, but still in the Amazon seller community with my buddies. So very, very cool time. I loved it. Yeah, just making the best, opening another door. I, and I've had this happen a million times where all of a sudden something just changes. You know, there could be a shift. Uh, people are no longer wanting fidget spinners or whatever it is. And I wasn't in the fidget spinner game, but my really good buddy was. And he came up, he patented this new fidget spinner. The containers were on the war at water. By the time they hit the, the uh, uh, warehouse, they were banned. Yeah. So, but you, you got to be able, and that's the beauty of what we do is being able to uh you know move on a dime you know a lot of corporations couldn't do that but being an entrepreneur you can do it uh unfortunately a lot of us when that happens uh, you go really into a state of depression because here's your baby you're gone um and then you let your mind take over thinking the worst instead of you know how can i get out of it it's just all of a sudden let's watch judge judy you know, 12 hours a day on the couch. And 
it doesn't work. So no. it, it's hard to get out of. And I, I don't know if you found yourself doing this. I, and I know I've had experience in this where at w when this first happened or second or maybe third, um, you know, but now it takes a lot to move me off. Like if, if something just goes into the ground and I have to start over, I have no problem. I'll just start up, start another company and get going. Yeah. So I, I really like to know about that. Like had, how would you recommend that our listeners handle adversity? Um, I think everyone's different. I, I've lost everything twice, by the way. So I'm hoping it's not going to happen a third time. So sure. before my hands in business, um, I, I was mortgage free at the age of 32 I, and I sold my house in London uh, in 2007 and put it into a property deal in Spain just before the crisis hit Spain. So I got, again, you know, another lightning strike there that no one saw coming. So it's ha I've had two big lightning strikes in life. Um, I think uh, I I've got kids. That's a big driver. Mm -hmm. You know, when you've got kids and you've got responsibilities, you don't have time to feel for sorry for yourself. You've just got to get up. Um, and I definitely have had and still have times where I question myself and I wonder why and what I'm doing. But I think um, you just got to, as long as you believe in yourself and you have a need, right? Some people don't need to work for money. I personally have always needed to work for money. So I just, I don't struggle to pick myself up because I have a need and there's a force in there that just gets me going. When, uh, when I was 28, uh, I, I wanted to have my first uh, million. When I was 28, that happened. When I was 29, I was broke. <laughs> it, it, it's just a horrible thing, but you get, you, you get over it and you learn. So, you know, I paid, I paid seven figures to get my, uh, uh, my MBA, you know, but, uh, but you, you, you don't let these things happen again. And one of the things uh, for me that I took away from this uh, was I live all within my means. I've got this buffer around me in case anything goes wrong now that, Hey, we don't have to have 10 TVs. We don't have to have three cars. You know, we, we live according, like we could probably live a lot higher standard of living than where I'm living now, but I, I'm living beautiful. I live, you know, at the beach. It looks great. I can, you know, I enjoy myself, but I know I can afford it. Hmm. And there's a, a, there's a really nice buffer around it. Um, and it's the mindset, right? So I, I I always like talking to entrepreneurs about this because everybody, like you said, handles things uh, differently. Now, we started late uh, and unfortunately this happened. And I, I really wish, um, you know, this could have been an hour long, but, uh, you know, we're at the bottom of the hour right now and we're just getting into this. So we might go over it depending on uh, any questions that are uh, are provided today. But I just want to say we're at the bottom of the hour. At the bottom of the hour, we have something called the Wheel of Kelsey that happens at the top of the hour. And that's a giveaway. And today we have an awesome giveaway. It's a thousand dollar giveaway. So, Jim, why don't we just talk about uh, that for a second? Sure. So, um, as you mentioned earlier, I'm now working with Gatida. Um, for those of you who don't know what Gatida does, uh, we work with Amazon FBA sellers. Uh, Amazon is an incredible and near perfect machine. That's why many of us chose that as a as a way to to invest our time and to make money. But the, the, you know, I think they, I read the other day that they they shift six thousand eight hundred units or transactions per minute. So any any machine that's got that transaction volume is going to have some misfires and mistakes. And this is where reimbursements happen. So what we do as a company, we order all the transactions for for sellers. We order about $25 billion a day at the moment, and we find where there are those small mistakes. Um, we open the case for on behalf of the seller, and we get 1% to 3% of annual revenue back for sellers. So the offer is to sign up to Gatida. We'll order all your transactions, and we'll aim to get as much money back for you as possible. Normally, we charge a 20 25% service fee. For this offer, if you sign up, we'll charge you nothing on the first $1,000. So if you like the service, we hope you'll carry on. If you don't like the service, you can take your thousand dollars, switch us off, and you've just got a thousand dollars for free. So it's a free thousand dollar offer. That's that's awesome. And by the way, uh, you can't guarantee anything, but I don't think I know any company who's not gotten something back. And I know one of our brands uh, that I work with. When we did this, uh, we got them one hundred twenty eight thousand dollars back. 
Yeah, I I, look, I do this all day. I've got sellers we're getting six, seven, eight, nine hundred thousand dollars back when we when we plug in. So yeah. obviously it's relative to the size of the seller, but um, it's significant. And the, and Norm, the big thing is that it's not just getting one percent of your revenue back. You, you can take that and you can put it into PPC. And if you three x your ROAS on your PPC, one percent becomes three percent. If we get you three percent back and you three x that, you're getting nine percent top line growth just by leveraging the cash flow from reimbursements. So for anyone that's not doing it, you should be doing it. So it's a, it's, a, it's a massive profit driver. And for the people doing it with their own teams, we can come in and be a sweeper. We can pick up the stuff that's been missed. So you can have a have your own team doing it and then have Petita plugged in as a sweeper to pick up any any um, discrepancies. Or often Amazon says no when they should say yes, and sellers don't realize this. So we'll pick up cases that have been rejected. We'll reopen them and we'll get a success on those cases as well. So it um, doesn't matter whether you're not doing it or you're doing it yourself. Um, we're happy to come in and act as the sweeper for anyone. What do you, and this is, you know, I, I've talked about reimbursements before, but what do you have to lose? If you're doing it yourself and you're not doing it right, if you're not an expert at this and you're leaving it on the table, why would you not go to a company like Atita and, and do this? Yeah, you're going to pay them, but it's found money. Yeah. And that's what I don't understand a lot of the times. So uh, anyways, that's the prize today. And also, we've got another great secondary prize for everybody. If you want, uh, we have a code, and that's going to save you $400. So anybody listening, if you're not uh, using Katina now, uh, we'll save you $400 on your transactions. That first $400 is yours, no questions asked. So uh, that'll be at the top of the hour. So hashtag we look Kelsey. Tag two people and you'll get a second entry. So Kelsey, if you're doing your job right, can you just hit that button? This episode of Lunch with Norm is sponsored by VAA Philippines. Looking for a high quality virtual assistant for your business? With the rigorous screening, intensive Amazon and Walmart training, and ongoing professional development, get the peace of mind with skill and motivated virtual assistants for a long-term working relationship. Hire through VAA today. And now let's get back to the show. So going out to the listeners, I'd like to hear, uh, you know, if you've had adversity and how did you overcome it? Or if you have questions about it and, you know, just throw it up here for Jim and uh, let's see what he has to say. I'm curious, when Thrasio just started out, <coughs> uh, I tried to get Carlos on the, on my other podcast, I know this guy, and uh, he threw me over to somebody else. But, <laughs> but anyway, what was it like being part of this crazy organization that had a, I think it was the fastest valuation to a billion dollars in history? Uh, it, honestly, it was amazing. I mean, people are quick to bash aggregators. Um, but to be inside, I joined was about 100 people. When within a year and a half, we were 2,000 people. Wow. Um, and to give context to this, we, we were valued at a billion dollars, much quicker than Google, Facebook, YouTube, all these mega companies that we mm. look up to. Frasio, their ascendancy was like nothing ever, nothing that anyone had ever seen before. So, you know, growing that fast comes with its problems, and we can talk about that. But being inside that, the energy was incredible. Um, you know, it, it was a, it was a whole new category of business. It was growing fast. Um, then there was this accelerator of COVID where everything went onto Amazon. And that's kind of when things started getting a little bit too crazy. Um, that, that was probably the downfall for many because of the, the, the adjustment post COVID and then the increase in interest rates exposed even the best companies. And, you know, mm. these guys have grown so quickly. Uh, you know, we, the rest is history. We can talk about that as well. But it, it was amazing and, and still is an amazing feat what the guys did. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's let's go back to some of the biggest mistakes that you've made. I know we've talked about you know one or two, but uh, can you expand on that? For me personally, um, well, I think my decision to sell my house in London and and put it into Spain in two thousand and seven was pretty crippling financially. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that was a very simple and very costly choice because my house in London now is worth a lot of money. And, and unfortunately, I sold the building in Spain a few years ago for a fraction of what the house is now worth. So um, financially, that was a bit of a disaster. But I, I 
I lived there for 12 years. I had an amazing life. My Three of my kids were born there. Um, they grew up bilingual Spanish. And so we lost a lot of money, but I, I think we took a lot of, you know, um, well, sounds corny, but, you know, I, 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 it, it fed the soul in many ways for me and my family. Right. We struggled financially for a while. So that, that was a terrible decision, which my ex-partner would tell me every week that if only we hadn't sold the house in London. <laughs> It'll be a typical couple of like, like, marital conversation around you idiot. You always oh. do this. Jim, it sounds like we're, we've run down some very similar paths. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm just, if this is your show today. Uh, I won't get down, like go down my, my, uh, my line, but uh, man, you have very similar paths as I, I have. I just have to tell you that. Yeah. Uh, I, I think, I mean, one thing about like my, I don't know if you've had this, but my, my ex, my ex partner would, uh, when the Amazon business was taking off and we, Obviously, it, it, you're very excited, but you can't take any money out because it's just it's sucking money rather than making you money. But that feeds your energy as the owner and entrepreneur. But of course, I'd come home and my partner would go, stop telling me about how much you've sold and show me how much money is in the bank. And she didn't care really about the business. She just cared about having money in the bank to, to run the family. And that, that, was a, that was a tough dynamic for a long time because I, I, so, I, I, I could see the future in five years. I could see the exit. I could see yeah. the money, even though it wasn't in the bank right now. And sometimes as an entrepreneur, your partner doesn't have that. And it's a, it's a hard dynamic to manage. At w when you were growing the, uh, your brand, uh, were you able to be focused or did you start spending a lot of money on shiny objects? Um, no, I was, when, I, when I got it, when the penny dropped about the Amazon opportunity, I was all in. Um, yeah. did I, did I see shiny object products? Did I buy shiny object courses? Did I follow shiny object gurus? Uh, absolutely. But it was all in the kind of Amazon get, you know, ecosystem. Oh, very good. I, I was the opposite. I, I went and I bought everything, uh, complete loss of focus, but that's just the type of guy I am. <laughs> uh, okay. Brands that are facing challenges. It could be today. Uh, it could be in the future cash flow, whatever they are, how can brands turn challenges into opportunities? Um, I tell you, I mean, numbers wise, I tell you what I saw a lot at Thrasio and um, still see now, I've actually silent partner and agency, we're winding down, but with, with a lot of P&Ls and Amazon businesses, uh, there are about 30% of the SKUs, often the SKUs that made the business that are no longer delivering profit on unit economics. And the founders are wedded to them because of the sweat that's gone into them. They don't want to let them go. It makes turnover, but it's not making money. And those 30% of SKUs take a business that's really profitable to a really average looking business that's ca that's cash flow strapped to then grow and launch other products. So um, I think that's one of the biggest things that I, I, I learned in Thrasio and then with the agency as well, because we were, we were taking brands off sellers and running their business for them for 7% of revenue. And it was a very tough conversation. So we'd, we'd often drop revenue for the first six months whilst we killed off these SKUs, mm -hmm. built a healthy base of profit, and then started growing the business again with a with a with a with a scalable margin. And I think everyone knows this, it's common sense, but so many owners don't do it. They can't bring themselves to kill off the, the SKUs that are not delivering the, enough profit. Because there's we're all bread, and I think we're all everyone talks about how much you sell on Amazon. You know, the conversations move to how much you make a little bit. But, um, you know, people are still obsessed with their top line at the expense of actually having a sane business. Drives me crazy. That's a huge pet peeve of mine. People come out leaning against a Lamborghini, shoving money. I made eight figures. Yeah. That's, that's all great. What's your bottom line? You know, let, let's let's talk about what your net profit is. Inter and, yeah. uh, you know, I, I've mentioned this on the show before. I've had a, um, I, I worked with a brand uh, that came to me with eight figures and they were very, you know, hoorah about, you know, eight figure business. And I took a look at him. I said, Hey guys, sorry to tell you this, but your eight figure business is losing you a hundred thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. And then we dug into it and we started to, you know, we were able to get that business up to 16. And by the way, Thrasio ended up buying it. So uh, they were pretty happy at the end, but they were losing money, but they thought they were doing great. So you yeah. you do have to go in, dig into your numbers as well. And I think that's probably another thing when you, when you have these challenges, a lot of the times the challenges could be turned around 
just by doing things a little bit differently, uh, you know, either cutting out certain things, uh, pulling back on, uh, you know, the way that you're spending. Uh, for me, I always love going out to events. I'll spend money on it because there's always opportunity that opens up for me when I go to events, meet new people. Mm -hmm. But there are definitely things in every business that, uh, you know, you go through with a fine tooth comb and all of a sudden you're making money again. So I don't know if you want to go there. Yeah. I mean, look, um, PPC, this, you know, um, is killing a lot of people. So, you know, events now, you know, I, 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 I think that so things like day parting, which a lot of Amazon sellers have not really focused on in the past. You know, I've got friends that have, taking their tackles down from 17 to 12% mm. just for day parting. That's putting 5% on the bottom line just by making sure that people are not kick, you know, clicking at nine o'clock at night when they're bored with no intention to buy. Um, so I think, you know, um, focusing on stuff like that is, is, is it, it, for brands makes a huge difference. Yeah, I, I have to agree. And there's so much is if you're having issues or even if you're not, uh, if you're selling your company or if you have dreams of selling your company, you do this in advance. Yeah. Wasted money uh, to your bottom line can kill you. Like it, You might be profitable, but every dollar that you spend, depending on the multiple, uh, if you save that money, man, it can come back tenfold for you. Yeah. Well, maybe not tenfold, but you know what I mean. And then the other thing, like, you know, so, um, you know, we're talking about sort of those thirty percent of SKUs in your portfolio that are often sort of bleeding all your profit. Just simple things again that people know but don't do is 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 like looking at packaging and sort of you know optimizing packaging for FBA size tiers, and and that's something that Amazon sellers who want to outplay the big guns have to do because the the retail ready products come into Amazon and they're not optimized for size tiers. So that's where if everyone's finding Amazon hard, these are the things that make a big difference because. If, if you want to win on Amazon, you have to be an absolute specialist. And that's everything from PPC, but to size tiering and package sizing and moving away from poly bags where, you know, the, the weights and dimensions flip every five minutes because the yep. scan suddenly overcharges you. Um, then you can use the box in your main image and you can put slightly bigger copy on the image of the box, which means that your swatch pops better and you get better click through rate. And all of these kind of like... Um, it's all small things that when you obsess with conversion and click through rates and PPC, um, it, all of these things, they come together and it's not any one thing. There's no magic bullet anymore, but it's just about discipline and not being emotional. And I think just trying to do little marginal gains that, that uh, add up to having a solid and defensible business, which is hard now, right? It's very hard on Amazon. It's not getting any easier. Right. And uh, I'll just add, because you're on the show today, reimbursements. You know, the, the always over, you know, they can yeah. be overlooked. And you were just saying this, you know, 20 minutes ago about how that could add a few points to your bottom line as well. Yeah, 100%. I didn't want to be over plugging it either. Ah, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely that, that um, you know, at first we were getting like a million dollars a month back in reimbursements. That's a lot of cash every month to put back into other things. And you should, every dollar you get back, you should be redeploying it with a multiplier, whether it be PPC or inventory or hiring talent, every dollar you put into your business should have a multiplier. So every dollar you can pull through reimbursements, uh, actually it could become really significant. So this goes out to the audience today and it's about saving money. Any tips? Have you done anything to put a few dollars back into your jeans uh, to save a few bucks? Uh, I'd like to know. Uh, and I know that we have people on here that's done this. Like I'm looking at Tom, I'm looking at Steve, Sasha, um, if you've got anything to add, uh, Luke. I mean, there's lots of people on on listening right now. And I don't know how many that are listening that haven't commented, but I'd love to know how you saved money. Put some money back into your jeans, put some more profit into the company. All right. Now let's talk about uh, talking Let's talk about going into 2024. It's different. 2022 is different than 2023. Now we're going into 2024. What are some tips that you can give sellers? Uh, I, it's really boring, but it's really practical. I just think you have to, 
You have to look uh, to start with your supply chain. Um, China's struggling at the moment. If you're buying in China, there's never been a better time to renegotiate terms. And just because you got a no a year ago, two years ago, doesn't mean that they won't say no now. You know, cash flow cycles and cash flow optimization is super boring, but it's what really grows your business. And, and not only grows the business, but makes your business more valuable. Because a, a company looking to buy your business looks at your cash flow cycles. And the, the shorter and better the cash flow cycles, the more profitable and the more valuable that business is. So it's people focus on cogs, they focus on PPC and all that stuff is really important. But cash flow cycles is massive. So pushing cash flow burden onto your supplier, not necessarily getting a reduction in cogs, getting better payment terms is a big driver for growth and profitability. So start there, start with your packaging. Then once you've got your product, it's then it's the common sense stuff. It's, it's the click through rate. Look at brand analytics. You know, have a, I call it conversion obsession. You know, your PPC, everything's driven by that swatch. You know, use services like IntelliV or Amazon now does it. But, you know, just check your conversion rate or uh, click-through rate on that main image. Because if people are not clicking through, it doesn't matter if you've got an incredible product or value proposition. That click-through rate determines everything. So start on there. And then once you're on your listing, use the um, search term query report and see where you're already converting. And really double down on what you're converting on. Get your images to talk to what you're converting on. Bid super high on those keywords, and you've got a good a good chance if you haven't already got it of getting the uh, Amazon's Choice badge for those search terms. And it's much more sustainable and cheaper and profitable to stack Amazon's Choice badges than it is to go for the hail mary of of a bestseller badge, which most people die on the battlefield trying to get there. Right. So it's kind of at Thrasio we called it the death zone. So the position one to three takes all the money. Position three to twelve we called it the death zone. Everyone was bleeding money on PPC, discounting, running deals. They were turning money, but no, everyone, it was just trying to get to the top. And it was just, you know, it was very hard to do. Um, we, you just talked about the uh, search uh, query report. And if any of you have not uh, subscribed to Kevin King's uh, newsletter, the last newsletter that he did had an, a, a really well-written article about ex the explanation of that search query report, how you can utilize it, how you can utilize it with um, the the report itself and brand analytics mm -hmm. uh, to really understand, uh, you know, how you can bring out the most in that report. So check it out. Uh, it was the last issue. I was just reading it uh, last night and it goes through it in detail. It's very thorough and it's very well written. You can understand it. So ch just check it out. Maybe Kelsey could put the um, the link in for uh, Kevin's newsletter. Okay, uh, I think we can go to some cust or some listener uh, questions now. All right. So we have a, a comment from Cool Hand saying, uh, "There's so much good knowledge and insight. It's hard to have questions while processing this all." <laughs> So uh, thanks, cool hand. Uh, this is from Sasha. Is there a pill recommended when dealing with Amazon seller partner support? <laughs> uh, um, from AMZ Elite, uh, whereabouts in Spain did you live? He's planning uh, on living there too. It, I can't, honestly, I, th I think it's the best place in the world. It's, uh, it's a place called Tarifa, T-A-R-I-F-A. -A. It's the southernmost tip of Spain. In fact, it's the southernmost tip of Europe. You mm. can see Morocco across the water. It's really beautiful place, yeah. Oh, nice. All right. Um, we had a question about uh, TikTok, but I don't think it's maybe relevant here. Um, but if there's any comments, maybe Norm, uh, even after submitting a brand certificate, why is it challenging to do branding on TikTok? Any comment on that? I I really don't know, Rad. We can look into that for you and put it into our group, but I, I don't know. Yeah. I can make it up if you want. I, I could do, you know, when when uh, we were doing, I, I used to be in the promo business and we'd be dealing with athletes. And one day I had a chance to go out and um, meet Wayne Gretzky. And somebody said, oh, can you get his autograph? And I, say, I said, yeah, sure. I do, a, I do a great Wayne Gretzky. So yeah, give me all your paper and I'll get him autographed for you. But uh, anyways. Okay, and our last question from is AMZ Elite. Uh, is the $1,000 uh, reimbursement, is it the value of reimbursements or the commission value? Yeah, we always get confused on this. So we'll get your $1,000 back into your bank. 
and we won't charge you any fees. So you'll get a thousand dollars and there'll be no service fee for doing it. All right. Okay. I think that's it. Jim, uh, how about your contact information? Um, I'm Jim Mann with M A N N. You can find me on LinkedIn or Jim at Getida, G E T I D A dot com. All right. We we just got uh, a question in from Amon. How do you deal with low quality identical products? So, uh, Amon, are you saying that your product is low quality at all, or you've got a premium product and there's a low quality item that's out there? So uh, uh, I can just give you my two cents on this. Um, If you've got a a premium product, you'll get a premium price. Uh, Perception is everything. Uh, If it's that first image, if the crappy product, uh, you know, took images with their iPhone, well, you're not going to, they're not going to get uh, the business. Um, I don't know. Like I've mentioned this before, but with uh, Amazon, I always look at it at three pricing tiers. And just, I'm going to do this very quickly uh, for Dead Sea Mud. You can go right now and you can see an eight ounce container of Dead Sea Mud for uh, $7 up to around 20 bucks. That's the first level. The second level, there'll be prices in between. But the next level that you'll see is around that almost $30 mark up to closer to a $50 mark now. And then the next one is 75 to 95. Uh, the only difference is perception. And it's the same mud. It's from the same Dead Sea. Uh, yet some people are product cannibalized uh, or just uh, end up product cannibalization. They make nothing except they sell volume. The mid tier is where the average goes. And then on the higher tier, and you have to check this out with price competition and um, uh, search volume. But uh, at the at the higher uh, tier, uh, if you do it right and you come out right and you can build that trust and you have to do a lot of things about that. We're not going to talk about that today, but then you can absolutely 100% uh, uh, win the bid all like all the time because somebody, and especially just think of pets. Do you want something really crappy or do you want something good? What about babies? You know, do you want your kids slipping on a, a crappy mattress that smells really awful or something that is odor free and it looks a lot more presentable for the parent? So those are just a few things. I don't I don't know about you, Jim. Uh, if if I have competitors out there uh, that are that first tier, I really don't worry about them. I don't deal with, you know, that direct sale from China for the most part. I'm not worried, worried about it at all. Yeah, I agree. And it comes back to what we touched on earlier, that just you you just have to really focus on having a, if your product is better, the only way that the customer knows is if it looks and feels better when they look at your listing. So you've really got to just geek out on that listing and uh, make your images, you know, sharper, Important. renders, put lifestyle, you know, I, I know all of this stuff is common sense. And again, people know, but don't always do. Just be really honest and get feedback or use a service like, you know, these split testings you can win but you have to have the best images and really good copy and that's how you can you can price up a little bit and take on these guys yeah and now for uh, 3d uh, rendering and video uh i've got to get this guy on he contacted me the other day oh no i saw it on my facebook feed and i reached out to him i don't know if you've ever heard of it um he, he he's not really well known in in the amazon space but he should be. It's called SavvyWorks. I think it's SavvyWorks.com. It might be IO. I'm not sure or AI. But what you do is you you feed in your label or your package, and it'll create the 3D rendering, and it'll create a video. It's so it's super cool. And uh, I just reached out to him. We had a talk the other day. I want to get him on the podcast as well. But these are things that just make your product look that much better. 3D rendering. Uh, especially if you're looking like looking at a pillow or sheets or anything that could wrinkle a hundred percent 3d rendering all the way. Yeah. And use the search term query report. I mean, you know, if there's one thing at the moment, that's got the biggest amount of power to work out how to sell your product and what your competitors are selling. It's all in the search term query report. So have a look at your listing and see how it's performing, where it's not performing against 
these other guys, there'll be some clues there as to what you can do as well. All right. Okay. So this is the last chance to um, win the thousand dollars today. And that is a hashtag wheel of Kelsey tag two people. You get a second entry. Um, you got about, 15 seconds before we get to the wheel. All right, Kels, let's have our last uh, sponsor. Oh, it's me, isn't it? It is you. Ah, I keep forgetting about this. All right, here we go. This is for Seller Basics. Hey, Amazon sellers ever faced with uh, account suspensions, ACE and hiccups, or IP headaches? Introducing Seller Basics, your Amazon account guardian. With just $99 a month, Seller Basics offers a dedicated team to shield your business from these challenges. Plus, this membership offers free legal consultation uh, consultations from uh, uh, seasoned e-commerce attorneys. No long-term contracts. Cancel with just a month's notice. And you can always view Seller Basics at sellerbasics.com. Now, there is a disclaimer. Seller Basics is not an insurer or a law firm. Consultations from independent uh, consultations come from independent law firms and results may vary membership needed before events leading to the claims and the last thing terms apply all right and by the way just on another note about seller basics somebody reached out to me just the other day and had an issue that um seller basics could take care of the problem was they weren't signed up. And like, like they said here, if you're not part, if you're not part of their subscription program, well, then you'll just get the hourly fee. If you wanted, if you want to do it that way, turns out this was a minimum $2,500 charge that anybody was going to charge, which would have cost 99 bucks. So just letting you know, if you don't have this, it's just a form of insurance that you can have. And it's the cheapest thing that you can get, $99 a month, and you've got really high quality uh, lawyers that can help you out. And like it's a retainer. So I, uh, again, I'm, I'm not only are they a sponsor, I would say it anyways, because it's so important. Okay. Oh, Tom's on. Hope to see you in London next week, Jim. I owe you a beer. Nice. He never offers me a beer. Uh -huh. <laughs> It's a free bar, so I'm not sure how generous it is. is it oh, okay, I get it. Yeah. Which one? What's that? Uh, there's, yeah, there's the it's Christmas party season in London next weekend. There's a Titan having a, a Christmas party, and then Danny's having his on Saturday night for seller sessions as well. Oh, wow. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. Oh, there, there we go, both. All right, all right. Okay, uh, one more question, Kels, or are we done? Uh, no, that's it for questions. Okay, I just saw that was still pending there. Okay, so let's get to the Wheel of Kelsey. It's time for the Wheel of Kelsey. All right, it looks like there's a lot of people that want that $1,000 uh, cash. Can't hear you, Kels. Lunchwithnorm.com, and we'll get you that thousand dollars of reimbursements. And available for everyone, we have the four hundred dollars. So it looks like it's oh, very good. Jan and Tata, there you go. Congrats! And by the way, if you uh, weren't listening at the beginning, there's a second opportunity here. So Katita's generously uh, provided us with a discount that anybody who's not part of uh Gatita right now can get a $400 credit not the 1000 but the 400 so that's another $400 back in your jeans norm okay. can, norm can i sort of interrupt just one other thing i should have said actually around Gatita for any existing clients which they may be listening um get it, get it reach out cuz we're finding that most of our customers when we speak with them we're getting we're finding about 30% of extra reimbursements in their account just from stuff that can easily be uh, 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 just, yeah, we can work with them. So if you're an existing customer, please reach out one-to-one -one as well. Happy to jump in and make sure we're getting all the money back that you can get. All right. Very good. Jim, it's over. You're done. We did it. It it's took 20 nice, minutes, yeah. but uh, we did it. <laughs> yeah, it was so great having you on. That's a pleasure. I really enjoyed it. It's nice to see you. Thanks. And um, I'm going to remove you. Uh, 
well, you're just going to go back uh, into the green room or whatever they call it. And then uh, I'll come back in two seconds. Sounds great. All Thank right. You. Very good. Want more great information? Don't forget to subscribe by clicking here. Also, if you want to check out our latest podcast, click over here. Entrepreneur, entrepreneur, entrepreneur.